I feel good about our you know our season and what we were able to accomplish. Uh, so I told our guys today, just be proud of what we were able to do. This league is a a year to year business, right? And just always embrace the moments that you have with the the people that you're around, because as we know, right, teams change, right, staffs change, a lot of change happens on a year to year basis. So just embrace that, right, live in the now, and. But really, be proud of what you what we were able to accomplish this year. Uh, you know, moving into you know the future and next year, we you know we like where we are with the young nucleus of guys that we have. I feel like we have a, a good group to build off of, and we still have to add more pieces. You're always adding, and always looking to acquire talent and get better, and that's where we'll look to spend our off season, right? How who can we find to help us, you know, get better? Oh, so many highlights throughout the year. So many uh, exciting games, close games. I think the one that sticks out, probably the the uh, Tampa Bay game, <laughs> sticks out the most is just you know, to see us be able to come back and see the plays that we were able to make in that game to win that game. That's one that that really sticks out to me. It's, it's a lot of a lot of moments. I can't can't give them all, but a lot of moments. I think none special than the. The win at the end of the year versus Indianapolis when we were able to clinch our spot into the playoffs. It's one that, you know, we'll always remember. Always a significant uh, moment for our team and where we were at the time. So a very special moment there. You talked about how you were able to play them to change, perhaps some of the staff to change. How much did this season prepare you for those changes and make it a decision and leading the charge in that? Yeah, this season there's a lot of changes that occurred throughout the year. You talk about players is up and down. A lot of you know guys are in and out of the lineup. So just get used to being in this position. Things are going to change, right? And being able to be flexible and understand that that happens. And you know, under my leadership, whatever happens is it's my responsibility is to find the right people. And for me, I always come back to the people. If you find the right people uh, that can lead, that are willing to help with a servant uh, mindset, servant leadership mindset. Like, we find the right people. That's all that matters. There are a lot of organizations that are not fortunate to have identified their franchise QB. How much does that help you going through the all season, knowing that you have your guy that you can kind of use your resources? Right. Having, having CJ, you know, to lead our team, I think that's the important question for every team. Right. You're in this league. Everybody's looking for that quarterback. Right, and we know how important the position is. You know how many resources go into finding right the right guy to lead, and you know over half the league has them, half don't. So it's um, it's a special position. It takes a special person to play that position, and you know, we're happy to have CJ leading us. We've seen a lot of young guys for our team this year play a significant amount of time, and you saw guys get better and grow throughout the year. And that's where I love coaching. I love that aspect of coaching is where you develop players. All right? Don't tell me what a guy can't do. Tell me what he can do, and let's see how we can continue to improve him and help him get to where we need him to be to play meaningful football. And we've done that with a lot of our young guys, not like Khalil, but young guys that you talk about, uh, Stingley, uh, Christian Harris, a lot of young guys talk about Juice Scrubs being able to step in. All of our rookies, right, who contributed this year, who probably played the – our rookies probably played the most snaps out of any rookies in the league this year, and not just playing snaps, but they play significant snaps. And our rookies were the reason why we won a lot of football games. You know, Tank, CJ, Will, Juice, a lot of guys, I mean – Jared Patterson stepping in and playing meaningful time for us. So yeah, all of our guys contributed. Henry contributed. All of our rookies contributed. And that's how I feel like you truly build a team. You build it with those young guys and come in, and they continue to improve and get better and continue to add more guys that come along and do the exact same thing. When you were hired, did you think a run like this was possible? Or did you even think, think like that? Well, 
when I was hired and whatever I do, uh, I think everybody wants to <laughs> look at themselves as being the best at what you do, and that's how I envision it. I envision us being the best at what we do, having the best possible season that we can have. If you're not thinking about it that way, I don't know why you're in whatever you do. If you're not trying to be the best at what you're doing, if you're not, if you don't have a positive outlook on whatever you're doing, thinking it's going to impact people in a positive light and help others, right, that's the reason why we all do what we do. Yeah. The running game will be uh, significant for us to improve upon. I think as you see as you go throughout this game, especially in the postseason, right, teams that win games, you got to be able to run the football, right, and sustain it, and we weren't able to accomplish that versus the Ravens, and it showed up. So we have – Definitely areas to improve, uh, many different areas, but run game is one of those areas for sure. Off that. Damian Pierce is looking to win back under contract for you guys. They're going to be talking. What are your plans for him uh, moving forward? Uh, we'll see where all of our guys and all the positions on our, our team will look at the roster, myself and Nick, and see uh, where we are and where we have to improve our roster. And I think that's our job. You know, is to continue to improve our roster as best as we can. Did you look at the situation and how significant that was this year? Is that something you go back and evaluate, like, what's any kind of running, or what is the evaluation process for trying to keep guys going? Well, our evaluation process when it comes to injuries, I think every injury, it's its, its own case. I don't think there's a one overarching theme with injuries. Things happen, and guys get hurt all across the league. So it's uh, – matter for us we evaluate everything that we do um, when it comes to you know just how we how we treat our players how we practice how we do everything everything is an evaluation process but it's not just one particular thing if everybody knew exactly what it was it will get it fixed but um, things happen Yeah, we, we would like to feel that all of our free agents love to be here and they enjoy playing here in Houston. Again, special place, special team, uh, special organization. So I think most of our guys would love to be back here. Uh, Jonathan specifically, he did a, a really great job for us. I think it's his most his productive year, his best year of his career. He did some really great things to allow us to be in position to win some games. Right, you, Everything I believe in, it starts up front with the, with the rush, all right, and also with the offensive line and protecting. So you know, we'll continue to build with our fronts, start at the front and build backwards. That's how I envision it. And you know, Jonathan had a really great year. Nico, how would you um, evaluate CJ's season as a whole from start to finish? What was able to do? Yeah, CJ's throughout the entire year. Uh, what I love most about it is the growth. Right? You talk about <laughs> from where we started in our first game of the season and how he grew. Right, as a player, as a leader with our team, like it's encouraging when you have a young guy who's able to grow not only as the entire season, but to see him grow and take the coaching points and grow from week to week and see a guy improve so quickly, like it's uh it's encouraging to see how much better he can get as he continues to uh play throughout the league. But it's uh that's one thing I'm I'm all about is growth. And the more we grow and the better we the better we become, right, the better our chances are of winning a ton of football games. Hey, so what does it say about that? Your staff, especially guys that are, in, you know, other teams are interested in. How do you go about managing that? Do you have some sort of strange contingency plans to get guys leave? Do you have conversations with them as they're going through the process? How, do, how does that work for you as an extension leader? Well, first off, it's a credit to our, our staff and it's the success that we had throughout the year. And a lot of people are trying to see right, what's going on in Houston, and a lot of people want to get, you know, have interview requests on boards. It's a credit when it's kind of the nature of success. When you have success, other people want to see what's going on, and they probably want to take some guys, you know, to help them out as well. So it's a it's a tough part of it, but it's part of the business. It's part. That's what happens, and we'll have to have contingency plans available if, if guys, you know, happen to leave. Yeah, you can't talk about CJ's success without talking about Gerard and what he was able to do, the relationship that he had with him, uh, just 
being there for him as a position coach, teaching him, guiding him along the way. Right, Gerard is one of the reasons why CJ had a successful year. The thing about me is when you come to developing people, players, I always, even as a player, like I always felt it was right for me to help other guys who played alongside me. Like that's how it was when I first stepped onto this, to the field here for the Houston Texans in 2006. Right? A lot of older guys took me under their wing, and they showed me the ropes. And so that's how I knew the NFL to be, right? The, the older guys, right? You reach back and you help the younger guys. You pour in as much information into those guys as possible, even though you know guys are going to take your job and they're going to move you out. It was never a selfish moment for my interacting with veteran players when I first came into the league. And that's just, that was how I saw it. And that's how I operated throughout my entire career while I was playing. And that's why I got back into, got into coaching. It's because I wanted to reach back and help players. So it's truly, that's my heart. That's why I do it. It's about serving the players, helping them to further their careers, be the best that they can possibly be within their careers. That's what drives me each and every day. So you talk about developing young players. That's where my drive is. That's where my passion is. But I've been this way since I was playing back in uh, 2006 because I got that example from a ton of veteran guys who showed me the way. There is pride in it. And, you know, you don't get this opportunity much, right, for to be able to come back and, you know, lead organizations that I play for. It's special to me. It means more to me than just wins and law. It's, it's about establishing pride into our organization, into our team, Establishing the excitement for our team around the city, and I think we did that this year. I think a lot of people were excited to watch the Texans play football, and we made a lot of people proud and to support our team, and, and that's what it's all about to me, instilling hope into our city, and that's what we did. Scott, you a chance this year to take a little bit of a break, but last year you stepped right in and everything went down time. What's, what's kind of like, like your schedule for you and your staff? Yeah, it's been full speed ahead <laughs> from first getting hired to now this point here. It's been full speed ahead, so we'll take a little time off to rest. Everybody needs a little rest, <laughs> so we'll take some time off to rest before we get back rolling with free agency and draft, but definitely need much-needed rest is, is ahead of us for sure. The conversations that you had last offseason, there was a lot of unknown in this franchise. Like, no one really knew the direction. They didn't know what they were getting in you. They didn't know what they were getting in the quarterback. So my conversations with free agents, you didn't really know what to sell them. Uh, the conversations with our guys, it's for any free agent, it's about opportunities, right? I mean, guys want opportunities to showcase their talent when you're a free agent. And I think now with people seeing how we play, seeing our young core players, right, especially seeing CJ, I think a lot of people probably want to play here in Houston, right? And, you know, that comes from the success that these guys have had, how they've shown up on the field, I think, you get that recognition and you get that credibility from your peers around the league, and that's what matters most. Our guys watch tape. They see how we play. They see how we operate, and I think that will be inviting to a lot of free agents to come here. But, again, for me, it would always be about the people and getting the right people in is, is everything to me. Well, it starts with with CJ, just him himself have the mindset that he has to continue to grow, continue to get better. That's everything, right? And we'll continue to support him, surround him with the right people to help him get his, get reach his potential, get as better as he can get better each and every day. We'll continue to help CJ along, but it helps most when a player has that drive, he has that inner will, that spirit to continue to get better. That That's the only thing that matters. When you have the right mindset, no matter – what happens, he'll continue to get better. Yeah. 
Uh, for me, I think just throughout the entire year, I've grown just with I think communication, just amongst staff, communication amongst the entire building, making sure everybody is aligned in what we're what we're doing, our vision. Uh, and that, that was the biggest thing for me. It's, it's different, of course, when you just focused on one position or one side of the ball, but just being able to make sure everybody in the entire organization is on the same page. It took growth to get there, and I think ended up in a really good spot this year. Uh, family is the most important thing. So for me to get an opportunity to get a break, I don't know if I get a break. My wife is, my wife is we're expecting. So my wife is due here in a couple of weeks. So <laughs> I'm on baby watch. So my <laughs> man, the stress level doesn't stop for me. <laughs> here we are again. All right, new season. But uh, now, very thankful for my family, always and their support and seeing them. Every game, seeing their support, win or lose, seeing those smiles on my kids' face, on my wife's face, it's uh, it's always uplifting to me. So I'm I'm excited to be able to spend some time with them, go hang out in the car line with everyone else. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, definitely be a fun time. Thank you for the question. Hmm? No, we don't know. We're waiting until the actual day. <laughs> The front, again, is everything for me, and we'll have invest a ton of resources into the front. If you want to play good defense, right, your front has to be elite. And that's why I envision us playing elite defensive football, and we, we have to get better there. And to get better, you have to invest the resources there up front. So that's what we'll do. That's where we're, our focus is heading into the offseason is to make sure our front right, gives us an opportunity to win some games. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for the year. Appreciate all you guys.